So over in Berkeley, a number of a young accomplished individuals, well, they're gonna be extremely disappointed this spring because essentially UC Berkeley is going to have to withdraw a number of students, gonna have to remove their acceptances all because of a number of wealthy Karens who filed a lawsuit. And as a result, UC Berkeley ended up losing its appeal before the California Supreme Court. Let's go ahead and dive into that case. So. The decision is the result of a protracted legal battle between residents of Berkeley and the university that has played out over the last few years. And a move that the Atlantic has deemed the apothesis of nimbyism, which is not in my backyard. A neighborhood group called Save Berkeley's Neighborhood filed a lawsuit challenging the university's plan to build new housing and academic space for Berkeley faculty and graduate students. And arguments say Berkeley's neighborhood neighborhoods invoke the California Environmental Quality Act. That's a law often used by homeowners to block new housing and homeless shelters and ironically stem developments that would help the state reduce its carbon footprint. Now, it's essentially reported that the Berkeley homeowner who really got this thing started in terms of the lawsuit actually spends half of his time living in New Zealand and not in the Berkeley area. And of course, he ends up using this California environmental law that was passed by Ronald Reagan, despite the fact that it's clear that there's no real environmental issue here that is within the framework of the law. So essentially found that loophole. But it was essentially stated initially that Berkeley would have to bounce some five thousand students from enrollment potentially. But fortunately now Berkeley has found other ways to make it work. So essentially what we know is that to soften the blow of the enrollment freeze, UC Berkeley said at least 1500 undergrads will be offered one of two options. One group will be asked to study as online students in the fall and will then be allowed to attend in person in January 2023. And a second group will be offered deferred enrollment to begin attending in person in January 2023. And save Berkeley's neighborhood. Well, they said on Thursday that while it was pleased that the state Supreme Court had maintained enforcement of the enrollment freeze, we'd like to assure deserving California high school students that we are as disappointed as they are that UC has tried to use them as pawns in UC's attempt to avoid mitigating the impacts from the massive enrollment increases over the past few years. Indeed, that this is an issue that was essentially sparked in part. Also, Berkeley is somewhat to blame. And so let's talk about what that looks like. So Phil Bakavoy, that's the group's president. They said that since 2005, UC Berkeley's admitted 14,000 students, but provided only 1600 beds. So essentially, he said this has prompted students to seek housing in Berkeley's neighborhoods where they've been moved into apartments that were once rent controlled, displacing low income and middle income residents. He said the housing shortage has created a massive amount of homelessness in Berkeley. And the resident groups said that it was trying to avoid a housing crisis like the one at UC Santa Barbara where students have had to sleep in cars and hotels. And the thing that this really kind of hits me, the fact is that you know who is really affected the most by this, who can't just go up and afford housing in the very wealthy and expensive areas in Berkeley. Generally, they are marginalized students and students who are brown and black from different backgrounds. And so as a result, it was these individuals who found themselves living in various places in the Berkeley area as a result of this housing shortage. But you know, again, now Berkeley is going to make some kind of accommodation as opposed to simply kicking those students out of school. Kyla. I also want to give a nuanced response to this because I haven't seen much coverage on how students have been feeling about this decision and I want to give a voice to that. One of my friends and colleagues, Ethan Weberstein, who is a student at UC Davis and a member of the student governor, um, government have spoke at length about this. First and foremost, students are of course frustrated at these NIMBYs who are taking advantage of well-meaning environmental laws to push their own agendas. It is fueled by greed and entitlement. Students are also frustrated with the universities of California because if they are serious about providing quality education, that includes ensuring students have access to affordable housing. This has been an issue for decades, and if they haven't addressed this, and if they had addressed this before, we wouldn't see a ruling like this today of these NIMBYs taking advantage of these laws and taxing, of course, like you said before, students of color, black and brown students. And so this ruling has a potential to impact thousands of students in California and across the country. And I hope this is a wake up call for all college administrators everywhere that affordable housing is a necessary component in education.
Absolutely, thank you so much for bringing that voice because we do need to hear it. And you know, as someone who was a member of the UC CSU system here in California, I can tell you it's essentially one of these West Coast Ivies. It's a way that you can afford going to school in this California state school system. And that is opportunity there. But the fact is, as Kyla has pointed out, if you don't provide housing, then how is a student going to excel in their studies if they're worried about where they're gonna lay their head. You can't necessarily just be taking money from students and not be providing them with opportunities to also live. Because we also do know, despite the fact that this is a state school system, it still enjoys the revenue source that is the education college system. So we definitely need these administrators to step up. And also, as Kyla mentioned, we have to hold accountable these NIMBYs and individuals who essentially are just trying to keep black and brown people out of their neighborhoods and are willing to use any kind of state law or resources available to make that happen.